All right, great music. All right, so we're going to have a very intimate presentation. We're going to talk about mobile disruption, right? We all know about mobile disruption because mobile disruption is the warning, warning, warning. We hear this all the time. Disrupt or be disrupted, right? Disrupt or be disrupted. But let's take a step back because I'm not sure that that is going to get us to where we want to go, particularly when we stay here and we sit here and we'll be here for a couple of days at Mobile World Congress and we're talking about mobile as everything. So is it really all about disruption? Fact is, I would argue that society has always advanced exponentially through disruption. Maybe the first disruption, in fact, the disruption that got us to why we are here in this very hall today was cave painting. It was the first time that people were actually able to express themselves and share communication. But for the next 5,000 years, it stayed exactly the same. It was siloed. Everything was siloed. Information was held by a few until the Gutenberg Press when we started to share information. And I'd argue very strongly that the Internet age, the digital age, actually began with the Gutenberg Press. Everything else has been evolution since then. But here's today's reality, and this is the problem with most, with most in fact, I, and, and I'd say 80% of what's happening today around the world in terms of innovation. I love this quote from Vanity Fair. San Francisco tech culture is focused on solving one problem. What is my mother no longer doing for me? So that's where we've come from, right? We've come from a place where we've saved the world, we've solved big problems, and I have to figure out how to make things work that my mother used to do for me. So I think that the problem is we have this conundrum. It's this fight between what I call disruption and versus evolution, right? So things that just evolve versus disrupt, and the digibabble conundrum. So digibabble to me is anything around digital that smacks of magic, that, that ascribes to digital powers and attributes that don't really exist. And maybe the, the height of it for me is probably, and why isn't that working? Here we, whoops. The height, sorry, the height of that for me is in fact Amazon. And Amazon, so USA Today, 20 years of Amazon, major disruptions. Amazon disrupts the last mile. I'm sure you've all seen that, right? Amazon disrupt, disrupts the last mile with drones. And we'll talk about that in a second, with the instant delivery. But here's the thing, right? Let's go back to Sears. Sears, the United States of America's very first major catalog company in 1897 disrupts the world. This is their manifesto. If I told you that this was Amazon's manifesto, and I've done that in meetings, you'd believe me. Listen, it is the policy of our house to supply the consumer everything on which we can save him money. Goods that can be delivered at your door anywhere in the United States for less than they can be procured from your local dealer. Google Amazon, look at their annual report and read their manifesto. It's almost word for word. So where is the disruption here? So, Forbes says Amazon is ripe for disruption itself. How could that be if they're disrupting the last mile, if they haven't finished disrupting? And I believe the reason is because when you look at the things they claim to be disrupting, like instant delivery, like delivery tomorrow, so here's the latest, the latest figures available about delivery. Investment in delivery startups are up over 1,000%. And by the way, nobody's making any money on it yet. Everybody's losing money. But here's the thing, this is from the New York Times a couple of weeks ago. Trying to duplicate what local pizza shops have been doing for decades, usually for free, is not necessarily innovation. So we've turned even delivery, which is a logistical issue, which requires us to buy trucks, to have all kinds of warehouses, all things, by the way, that Amazon is investing in. And I bet most of you don't know that Amazon is also buying ships. So they're buying, like, not yachts for Jeff Bezos, but, like, big delivery ships so that they can actually take goods from China all around the world. So there you have it. So where is the innovation? What is happening? So the Guardian says the Silicon Valley buzzword disruption has the aftertaste of a sucked battery. It doesn't even mean anything anymore. So here we are, Mobile World Congress, Half the people out there are talking about disruption. I heard it at least 20 times this morning. What should we really be thinking about? So my view is, rather than thinking about disruption, we should be thinking about dissidence. And there's a big difference. 
So dissidence, according to the dictionary, is broadly defined as a person who actively challenges an established doctrine, policy, or institution. When dissidents unite for common cause, they often affect a dissident movement. So the difference between disruption and dissidence is that dissidence doesn't look to displace, it looks to build. It looks back and it says, okay, there was a Sears in 1897 that did some amazing things. I'm going to be the dissident. I'm going to build on that. I'm going to challenge their doctrine because their doctrine of delivery and of order on phone or mail or whatever is old and needs to change. But that's not necessarily disruption. And my belief is that you get to a more important place quicker and with more efficiency and with more power. So just let's take a look at dissidents. So first of all, dissidents is about breaking convention. So let's look at people who have broken convention. CVS Pharmacy in the United States fighting, fighting competitors who look just like them. Tremendous opportunity to break out, but everybody's having the same problem because everybody is in healthcare. Today, it's very hard to find anyone who's not. Even Coca-Cola wants to get into healthcare. But what did they do? They said, let's be dissident. Let's do something different. So they stopped selling cigarettes. So they became the first chain of their type to stop selling cigarettes. It was a huge profit maker for them. 7,600 stores nationwide stopped selling. And a year later, they claim that they've reduced just them giving it up, has reduced sales by 1% in the 13 states that they are. Now, that's a big number if you're in the United States. But here's the thing. What they've done is, They've created dissonance in their business because they've now done something that changes who they are. It puts them in a different category from their competitors. How about acting out of conviction? Dissidents act out of conviction. They have conviction about things. They believe in stuff. So I love this example, and some of you might have seen it because it went viral around the world. The little hummus store in Israel that offered a 50% discount to Jews and Arabs who came in and ate together. So people who might not have eaten together, who might have not found a restaurant where they felt comfortable to eat together, could come in to eat together and get a 50% discount. That is dissidence. It's not disruption. But that dissidence created more interest and more virality and more comment than huge competitors, huge chains, huge global businesses around the world who were selling food or looking to do similar things. So again, conviction. This is one I believe in, possibly more than anything else, the notion of people first. So we talk here about mobile everything. My mantra in digital is digital is everything, but not everything is digital. So I'd argue the same thing. OK, mobile is everything. Get over it. We live in a mobile age. Get over it. right? But not everything is mobile. Not everything we do with our mobility is mobile. It's about people first. You have to think about people first. What is it you're doing? What is it the people who you want to affect are doing? Where are they? What is important to them? And that's why I applaud Facebook, because Facebook gets it. Facebook gets that we are all jaded. We all have Samsung Galaxies. We all have iPhones, sixes, sevens, eight, tens, whatever we have. But most of the world doesn't. And there are still places in the world where texting is in fact high tech, is in fact as high tech as, as will be for a number of years. So Facebook understands that. So Facebook says, let's do 2G Tuesdays. And let's understand what's happening in the rest of the world. And let's program and build and create for the rest of the world. To me, that's inspiring and amazing. How do you change the world? Dissidents change, change the world. I love this. This goes back to my previous one. So some of you might know about this particular case. What I want you to pay attention to is the times that it gets used. So in South Africa, where most people don't have smartphones, but people do have phones, they share. Sometimes a whole village will share a, a phone, a dumb phone, a feature phone. Texting is a way to teach children. Now listen, listen closely. Users are most active between 4 a.m. and 8 a.m while traveling to school. You know why that is? Because they live out in rural areas, and they have to drive sometimes two, three hours to get to school, or walk that distance to get to school. Think about that. And so what do they do? Two or three or four of the kids will learn on the way by texting with basic phones. 
That is amazing. It's inspiring, and it's something that we as marketers should understand and understand why and how does it work, and how can we make that work even in the more high-tech world that we look at. Dissidents are driven by empathy, right? Lego. Lego creates now is starting to look at how can they affect children, and ultimately they'll do adults, but they've started with children. Here's a prosthetic arm that a kid can attach pieces to with Lego. So think about that. Taking something that in and of itself could be a debilitation for this child, could be something humiliating, something that they're embarrassed about, or something that, that is, a, is seen as an affliction, and turns it into something cool and useful and important. I love that. And then we have, for those who need it most, for people who have to have, who have, who have deep issues, who have societal issues, how can we help use mobile? What can we do? How can we change the world? Take a look at this. In a society where family is above everything else, it's inappropriate for women to openly seek help. Vodafone believes technology can be a powerful force for good, so we created an app in which women could secretly seek help. Hidden in a flashlight app, but if the user is in danger, she can just shake her phone and the app automatically sends a message to three people she trusts, along with her exact location. To spread an app which works only if it's kept secret, we hid our messages in places no man would ever see it like lingerie tags at partner shops, wax strips, female toilets, even promoted female video bloggers on national TV to boost views online on their tutorial videos, which contained our message hidden deep inside the content. We estimated the secrecy would last 10 months, then the app would slowly be exposed and become useless. That's when we moved to phase two, launching an update which turned the innocent flashlight into a mirror application. Once again, using hidden messages to announce the change. If any men would try to watch these videos, we attempted to lure them with banners that would direct them elsewhere. Hidden inside a shareable cosmetics discount, the message appeared only when it was copy-pasted. All of Vodafone female subscribers were informed through an automated voice system about the function of the app. They were also given the option to share the voice message with their friends and help promote it. The system recognized if a man answered the phone, so instead he would hear a generic promotional offer from Vodafone. As of today, over 254,000 women have downloaded the app. That's 24% of all women with smartphones in Turkey. The app has been activated over 103,000 times. We hope that one day the biggest success will be when we don't have to make any more versions of the app and no woman will ever have to download it again. Now, what's important about that? What's important is that Telefonica decided to use its own technology, to use its platform, to use its product to help solve a societal, to help solve a societal problem. Not just to do something nice, not just to create the next app, not just to do something that my mom's not doing for me, but really to solve a problem, to fix something. That is critical. That's important. That is dissidence. Dissidence doesn't depend on best-in-class technology. I mentioned the case before and the, the story of learning through text in South Africa. But I want you to take a look at this one because this is using SMS technology to save lives in a way that I think is really incredibly powerful and one that, again, should be a lesson to all of us in how to think about how do we apply technology, how do we apply what we do, and how might we best make an impact on the world. Every day, the Mexican Red Cross attends more than 3,000 emergencies. In 5% of the cases, patients die for not having basic medical information available. Patients who are in state of shock or unconscious without a medical tag to access this data. The solution, using a media with 90% of penetration in Mexico. Mobile phones, Mexican Red Cross, SOS, SMS. Sí me es muy útil, solo tengo que tomar el teléfono del herido y aunque esté bloqueado, marco asterisco 767 desde la pantalla de emergencia y en segundos me llega un mensaje con toda su información, cuál es su tipo de sangre, si es alérgico a algún tipo de medicamento, si es diabético y ya con esto yo puedo salvarle la vida. We asked people to join our database through an SMS message. Anyone can upload their data either by replying to the message or by entering it in the Red Cross website, associating their mobile number to their medical information. 
we created an online emergency database accessible from the victim's mobile. No matter what model or operating system they use, we turn it into a tool to save their lives. SOS, SMS. So for those of us who think that the state of the art is having your iPhone attached to your iWatch, attached to your iPhone, attached to some device on your bed, attached to your toothbrush, and that that is going to help you is great and it's wonderful and we all do it and I'm as guilty as anybody. But this is amazing because this saves lives and I think it's inspiring and it's something that we should be paying tremendous attention to. Dissidence is being smart as opposed to following the herd. So this is a case, I just love this case, right? Everybody knows about Adele. How many people here like Adele, follow her music? Yes, good. So I can tell you that the interesting thing about Adele is that Adele crosses all ages. So young people, older people, middle age, everybody likes Adele. So Adele decides that she's gonna come out with her new album. Now we know people don't buy albums, people don't do anything that is not streamed and given away for free and yada, 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 yada. So what does Adele do? She says, wait a second. I'm not going to do that. Why would I give my music away? So I'm going to do, which is marketing. It's nothing to do with technology. I am going to give out a song, just like the industry has always done. If people like that song, they can buy the rest of them. Full stop. And so what does she do? She sells more albums. She sells more music than anyone has done since the 1990s. On an adjusted basis, this woman was a star going back to pre-digital days. Versus Madonna, who has never had a bad launch, who has always had success. So she decides, because she's following the herd, that she is going to launch her newest, latest album on Snapchat. And what happens? It's a disaster. It's the first time in her entire career that she tanked. Now, of course, people say the music isn't so good, the videos weren't so good. How would anybody know? They went away too quickly. So, old-fashioned, maybe, or maybe it's just smart marketing. Maybe it's just not getting caught in that digibabble trap. Maybe that's what dissidence is. So, Madonna tried to be a disruptor. Adele used dissidence. She just said, I'm going to use what's there. I'm going to do what I know is smart, I'm going to use all of the technology that I can, but I'm going to do it in a smart way as a dissident, not try to be a disruptor and tank like my friend. So two final thoughts, and I'd like to take some questions. So if there is any disruption by Amazon, it's the fact that they've trained Wall Street not to expect profits. And if you have been following what's happening with Amazon, it's amazing to me that in fact now, for the first time, Wall Street is starting to pay attention and saying, wait a second, what's going on? Or if you looked at LinkedIn, who just lost a, a ton of their value. So LinkedIn, one of, in my opinion, one of the best social platforms that exist, who give real value, who are growing, but because they missed an analyst's call, their stock drops. Versus Amazon, who continuously don't make money, but because they tell us that they're going to deliver by drone, manage to excite the street. That's great, but at the end of the day, where's the real disruption here? What are we really doing? Who's really going to make the impact that lasts forever? And my view is that when you look at Forbes and they say Amazon is right for disruption, I think that is possible. But again, so was Sears way back when. And look where we are. Amazon is an evolution of Sears, and something else will be an evolution of Amazon. And my final thought is, we can change the world. We can change the world with tools we have, or we can watch them be used against us. And I think that that is the critical issue in our world today. So when we look out at what's happening, right, we look and we say, look at the, look at the, at the terrorist networks, look at ISIS and ISIS, look what they're doing, look what they're doing with the technology, look what they're doing with the things that we love, with the YouTube, with social networks, with all the things that make us happy, bring value to our lives. Look at how that stuff is being perverted. So I think that we can change the world. We need to work harder. We need to stop thinking that we're all disruptors and start thinking about how can we take that technology and become dissident. So hashtag be a dissident. Take it, use it, 
Tell me how you're being a dissident. Tell me why being a dissident excites you. Hopefully it does. And go out on the floors today and ask people what they are doing to be dissident. Because I think that that is how we're going to get to the next great evolution of our business, how we're going to get to the next great thing by being dissidents, not by thinking wrongly that we're actually being disruptors. So with that, I thank you all, and I'd like to take some questions. Anybody? If I don't get at least one question, they don't give me lunch, so. Are you waving or you have a question? I think he's just waving. Oh, okay. You can say hi to me, too. No, I have no, I'm sorry, I have no oh. question. I was just saying hi to you, so far. Ah. No questions? Nobody? Everybody's too shy? All right, if you're too shy to ask me, here's my email. I'm happy to answer. I'm happy to answer any questions by email. You can follow me on LinkedIn and the weeklyramble.com and the Huffington Post. And again, I thank you. Have a great show.